sting. I'd never seen anybody do that before. So people started knocking on our door and inviting us to church. And Diane went to church and it was great. And, you know, she, uh, she was busy. I was working. Honey, good. Glad you go to those church people and do all that stuff. I'd sit around, drink beer, and say, honey, talk to those church people, you know, do all that uh, church stuff. And I met some people at Chance Teaching Hospital, went out to a Bible talk. It was unbelievable. I'd never heard the word of God spoken of and talked about and applied to people's lives ever. And then about midnight on November 30th, I came home from work and said, look, let's go to the church. We went down to the Crossroads Church. The choir was singing there. I don't know why they were singing there at midnight. They come over and they sang, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I went down to the water. It was warm. I remembered I was scared to death. <laughs> went down to the warm water. Jim Miner baptized me into Christ. That was in 1977. I tell everybody about it. I talk to young Christians. Every baptism, I go up and talk about my conversion. Sam Lang actually baptized my wife, Diane, a few days before me. You see, I was saved, I was rescued. Because of his great love for me, God, who was rich in mercy, made me alive with Christ. It was unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I just couldn't believe being forgiven, being washed, being saved. I still can't believe it to this day. The life I lived and the way I lived and all that God loved me and how he saved me, I was just like the prodigal son. God came and ran out and loved me and hugged me and kissed me and threw his arms around me and put sandals on my feet and a ring on my finger and we killed the fattened calf and celebrated and for these last 30 years, I've been raised up with Christ to see the incomparable riches of God's grace. We started our work in Africa. We didn't know what we were doing, where we were going. It was amazing. Just God planting churches and people falling down and worshiping God everywhere, all over the continent and Lagos, Abidjan, Nairobi. I got to visit all these churches and work with them. It was unbelievable what God did. All the work we did with HIV AIDS, all the partners and donors. I could write a book just about all the different ways God opened up doors. I went to a meeting in, uh, in Johannesburg and sat down and met this woman from Atlanta. She, she uh, had, wor had worked with the Carter Center. She, her father had been taken care of by hospice. I used to work with hospice. She rode a horse on the property where, uh, where I worked at Northside Hospital in Atlanta. Her name was Sandy Thurman. She was director of National AIDS Policy at the White House. And God just opened up doors like that everywhere. It was unbelievable. We've spent great time with Oprah Winfrey and Colin Powell and Bill Clinton. I got a call in September. We were leaving the country. It was unbelievable. I got a call. Just let people know we were leaving, leaving, uh, leaving town. I got a call from the Nelson Mandela Foundation. They said, Mr. Mandela would like to, like to have coffee with you. So they have to have tea. I have to have tea, you know. They don't have coffee, they have tea. I said, Mr. Mandela would like to have tea with you. So in September, I went down and had tea with Nelson Mandela. We chatted for a long time. You see, what God has done is he just wants to raise us up with Christ, to show us the incomparable riches of his grace. He wants to bless us and encourage us. My children, my family were just unbelievable. I'd never grown up around anything like that. And so we prayed and we studied and we had family devotionals all the time. We did all this stuff and we were at the beach in July. I, just, I sat for about two hours, just watched my children. You see, God had raised us up with Christ and just was showing us the incomparable riches of his grace. All of this stuff is just a flicker, just a glimmer of all that God has in mind for us. And I hope and pray in Christ that you'll rise up and see the incomparable riches of his grace. We moved to uh, Philadelphia early October, October 2nd. On October 26th, my wife passed away suddenly. We'd been married 31 years. We'd known each other five years before that. We were together 36 years. The love of my life, gone, passed away. I'd lay in bed and I'd just hug a pillow and I'd listen to songs that, that reminded me of her. Wind beneath my wings. I'll always love you. How can I live without you? A one-of-a-kind love affair. And I just thank God for every second and every minute and every hour and every day that we spent together. Because God was showing me a flicker, a glimmer, a glance, just a little bit of his tremendous mercy and his grace. Brothers and sisters, God wants to raise us up. God wants us to, to persevere and to have faith and to be great disciples and give our lives to God. Just so he can show us the incomparable riches of his grace. That's all he wants to do. It's just so it's all he has in mind. And so, you know, Beethoven's fifth and the sunset, it's, 
at Table Mountain and, and your time with your wife and your children and all your kids and all the great memories and all the great things. It's just a little bit of all that God has in mind for us. And this morning as we celebrate